Last video, I talked about how to create control rigs. Uh, I'd like to talk about how to actually use them now. You can create all of the animations you need right here in Unreal, and if you are you know, a small project, that might be a good idea. Trying to learn how to use Unreal and Blender and Blender's animation tools and the import-export pipeline and how to visualize how an animation will look in Unreal based on how it looks in Blender, it can be a bit much, and it's certainly a bit heavyweight. So maybe just do it all in Unreal, and for simple animations, that's perfectly fine. Unreal can handle it. But you have to know how to do it. It's easy if you know how, and impossible if you don't. So I'm going to teach you how to do it. At least, I'm going to teach you, teach you how to do it as of Unreal 5 Preview 2. If you're coming back from the future, things will probably have changed, and maybe you know some tricks I don't. Feel free to post down below if uh, I missed something obvious or useful. The core issue is that using these animation tools, these here, these work great, but they only exist inside of a sequencer. They're so bound to the sequencer that if you spawn in a new object, like drag a new control rig into the scene, it will automatically create a level sequencer if one doesn't exist, and automatically adds itself to that level sequencer so that you can animate it immediately. It's just assumed that you're going to be using them in level sequences because that's all they're built for. Unfortunately, level sequences aren't very flexible. All of the other kinds of animations, montages, poses, animations, bo direct bone manipulation, all of those go through the animation blueprint, which then decides what the actual bones of the body will do. You can mix and mask and override, and that allows you to have a lot of flexibility as to what the character actually does. In fact, you can even add in a second automatic post-processing blueprint to do even more stuff. Except if a level sequence is involved, because a level sequencer doesn't go through the animation blueprint. Normally this isn't a huge issue, because... Uh, it doesn't really directly control the bones in most animations. Most level sequences just tell the blueprint what to do, just kind of send it messages, and just let the blueprint do whatever it needs to do. But if we're using a control rig, we are giving direct control over the bones of this body to the level sequence. It has absolute authority. Now this is a problem if you ever want to do anything else. For example, over here we're using a basic pose setup, and we are overriding the basic pose with a look at the player command. See? It's pretty basic, right? We can't do that. This character will never be able to look at me as long as the level sequence is playing. Because the level sequence has so much authority, I cannot rip control of her eyeballs away from it. In addition, level sequences are no good for conditional logic or tossing around rapidly. They're really built just for cutscenes. They're supposed to start at A, play to B, and stop, or loop. They're not supposed to be able to do anything conditionally or be overridden by anything which makes them pretty unsuitable if you ever need anything more complicated than just playing from A to B. The good news is, it's very, very easy to turn these sequences into animations. It's easy, but almost completely undocumented. All you have to do is right-click on the skeletal mesh, which you might not have realized was even a thing you could do. I didn't. Then you can just create a linked animation sequence. I've already done that because there's a little bit more stuff we have to cover. It's not complicated, it just asks you for a name. A linked animation sequence is an astonishingly powerful tool because we can change it on the fly later. If we decide that we want her to open her mouth or you know, change how her feet works or whatever, as long as we don't change the length of the animation, we can easily change the details of the animation. And then when we hit save, it will automatically propagate to the actual animation. Now that we have an actual animation, we can just use it. 
I'm going to show you a montage example. If you're curious more in more detail about how I set up the montages, there is in fact a whole video about montages. But I'm just going to use montages as an example of how to do it here and show you a couple of fun little miss features that you're going to want to be careful of. You see, this version of Kate is already set up with the animation blueprint that we need. It's the same animation blueprint as this Kate, but it's got different cues for, you know, playing a different montage and, you know, responding to a different collider. But you can't tell, can you? The reason you can't tell is because this sequencer is playing. This is the sequencer and it's set to autoplay. So we're just going to turn that off and that should restore control back to us, right? She's frozen. Why is she frozen? There is a glitch or a misfeature. As long as this sequencer window is open, this sequencer has authority even if it's not playing and even if you're not in edit mode. I can't imagine why they set it up like this. But while you're playing the game, if an edit mode window is open at the bottom of your screen, it overrides whatever else you're trying to do. Okay, we're just going to close that. This is what you expect to see. So now when we hit play, it's going to play the logic that we've set up. This is the logic. Here you can see that when we begin play, we tell her to play a specific montage uh, aspect called default. And then later on, we tell her to play alert and mope. This is the same thing we did in the other video. This is the other Kate. They're identical. If you want to take a look, this is what this particular montage looks like. It looks exactly like the other montages, and it works exactly like the montages from the video. When we hit play, she'll pop into this because we have her do that during begin play. And when we look at her, she'll look up at us, have a comically surprised expression, and then start to track us with her eyes, sort of. Uh, I haven't polished the eye tracking, so she looks pretty stoned, but still, it works fine. The reason it works fine is because she's now using it via animations. She's now she's no longer taking the, the sequences directly. She's now taking animations. And if we go off of her, she will default back to her other pose, which I've got an animation that actually blends back into her um, depressed pose for us. I don't have Chloe set up that way. She is just playing off of a sequence and just looping forever. And she's also got a bit of a banana face, and I think that's because she's not using the Chloe skeleton, she's using the Kate skeleton, but that's fine. This means that we can have these cutscenes, uh, sorry, they're not, they're not technically cutscenes, we can have these level sequences in this level. I've got Kate sitting, Kate looking up, Kate looking down, and Kate at alert, staring at us. These are in the level that they're currently being used in. And if we wanted to, we could pop any of them open. We could change how it looks. We could make her have a different expression. For example, if we wanted to, we could have her alert expression. We can add in a new keyframe for her jaw, which allows her to go, oh my god. And then if we hit save, now when we close this window, and we have to close it, otherwise it will have authority, when we come over here and she looks up at us, she'll give us this normal look, but then when she comes out of that into the looping at attention, she should have a giant open mouth, which is obviously very goofy, but that's the point. It just updates automatically. We can update it here in the scene and it just works. You just have to understand some of the um, unusual aspects of getting it to work, which involve understanding some of the small glitches that might happen. Keep in mind, this is also fairly crash prone. I, I've crashed a dozen times today. Uh, this is something that's a combination of bugs in sequencer and bugs in the control rig. Um, I expect all of those bugs will get smoothed out in time. This is still a preview version of Unreal and a preview version of control rig. But just as a handy dandy clue, if you come up here and hit save all, that will save everything. All of your open sequences, all of your linked montages, everything. So uh, I would do that fairly frequently if you plan to approach this, because otherwise 
you can actually just lose linked um, animations entirely and the montages will be full of garbage, which is just the worst. So you're going to want to make sure to save frequently if you're having any sort of crashing problems. That's it. We can create every animation we want exactly like this. We just create a level sequence, we pile it around our characters, and then we link it to an animation. And then we can put the animations in a montage or directly into an animation blueprint, however we want to handle it. Have fun.